Hey there, welcome back and thank you for watching. Uh, this video is going to be all about lab test results on virgin samples of hydraulic oil, tractor hydraulic oil. So we've got four brands here in the background, Kubota UDT, Super UDT2, Agco Permatran 821XL, Traveler from Tractor Supply, and then Mobile Delvac. All four unopened containers, the five gallon jugs open, that's left over. But the other four are unopened, fresh containers. I'm gonna open them up, pour the samples into the bottles and send them off for testing and see what's inside of these. So th if, if you're not up to speed on this, this is a nonstop uh, discussion in the forums about whether alternate brand hydraulic oils are the same as, better than, worse than, you know, whatever. Uh, what the manufacturer recommends. Uh, so we're certainly not going to solve uh, or settle this debate in this video, uh, but we're going to add some data to it because I've never seen lab results uh, for any of these brands. And if you want to get your hydraulic oil tested for free, here's how that's going to work. You're going to buy the oil, presumably because you're about to change your hydraulic oil. Uh, you're going to request a free test kit from Blackstone uh, you're going to have to videotape yourself opening the new bottle, collecting the sample, so I can be sure that it came from a fresh bottle. And uh, then you're going to email that video or link to that video to me uh, using the email address in the description of this video. Once I have all of that, I'm going to give you an order number with payment, and you're going to fill it out on your test card, and you're going to send it off, and it's going to get tested for free. When the results come back to me, I will immediately provide them to you, and then I will make a future video on that uh, topic and the results of that particular oil. Maybe I'll bundle a couple together if I get a few you know, samples. Uh, so this is not an unlimited open invitation to test 100 different brands. I don't even know if there are that many, um, but I'm certainly willing to do another you know, four or five brands uh, this year. Uh, so I'm hoping some folks will take me up on that. Okay, so how does this work? Uh, Blackstone Laboratories, uh, this is the company that uh, Todd from Project Farm uh, uses. If you've ever seen that channel, it's a really cool channel. It's just outstanding what he does. Uh, so that's who we're using here. Uh, you go to their website, you request the free sample containers, they mail them to you, you fill them up. There's a bottle inside a bottle, bottle here. Uh, you fill them up, and send them off and they send the results back. Um, so in this case, these are virgin samples, fresh out of the bottle. I wanna know what's inside of them, but I don't want the analysts to know the brand that they're analyzing. Uh, so I'm gonna give them names, but I'm not gonna name Permatran, Permatran. I'm not gonna name Delvac, Delvac. I'm gonna name them some alternate generic name so there's no way the analyst could possibly know what's inside the container. Here's a little video of me taking the samples uh, out of three of the containers uh, to send off to the lab. You just kind of wrap them up here, label them, um, and I've given them all uh, code letters. Uh, not particularly uh, difficult, uh, but certainly not explicit in the name. Uh, so you just wrap them up and send them off. And that's uh, just wanted to show you a little bit of the collection and also show you that I am opening uh, brand new containers and also shaking them. Uh, as Todd would say, in case the additives uh, kind of fall out of suspension as the you know, bottles sit. So I shake all the containers before I dump uh, your pour sample into the bottle. Okay, so you're probably noticing I'm missing the mobile sample. I'm still waiting for that container to come so that'll, uh, that bottle gets filled off camera. Uh, but I do have my personal sample here. So uh, this is uh, left to right, Kubota, Permatran, Traveler, and Mobile. And he, you can see one of these does not look like the other. Uh, Traveler has a distinctly different color. I am colorblind, but I have to ask my wife what uh, what that shade is. It certainly looks a lot different. And I don't think it's the cap. Let me take the cap off, see if that's tinting it. No, no, that that's not cap. Uh, that's that's the oil. These four samples here, I'm going to put them in the freezer, and I think I can get down to like minus six uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, five or six, somewhere in that range. And that's going to give us a cold temp viscosity. So we're going to freeze them and then we're going to do the pour test and see which one flows uh, the best at cold temperature. 
Uh, this is similar to what Todd does in Project Farm, uh, except that he's got a little better contraption. Uh, we're just gonna duct tape these together. Uh, now I could have paid Blackstone uh, to do the viscosity index uh, test, which would have included a very cold, I think minus 40 Celsius, I think is the standard uh, viscosity test. Uh, but I just didn't want to pay 40, well, 38 bucks a sample uh, to get that number. That would have been a big uh, cost increase for me. And here's my test rig. Uh, I'm going to go get those bottles out of the freezer and uh, just dump them and uh, see which one uh, flows the best. So here we go. Okay. Then a final look here at the bottles after the cold pour test. They pretty much line up with the, the results as far as how much is left. I did tip the uh, Kubota bottle a little sooner than the others. But even if you take that uh, mistake out of the equation, Kubota still clearly flowed uh, better in the cold temps. Okay, so now we're going to move on and talk about these uh, products. Uh, so these are universal uh, tractor fluids or tractor hydraulic fluids. Uh, these three don't say anything about synthetic or semi-synthetic. Uh, Permatrans the only one that has a synthetic uh, label on it. So even the Kubota UDT2, uh, some people have said online that it's full synthetic, uh, but I'm not seeing that on the bottle. Uh, and, and it seems like if it were, they would definitely advertise that. On the flip side, it sure did perform well at minus 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, in the flow test, so I don't really know. But the products here are fluids, tractor hydraulic fluids made to operate uh, hydraulic cylinders and uh, transmissions, because that's what's going on in the GC, Massey GC, the Kubota BX, you know, it's, it's one fluid does it all. Uh, I believe, well I know, there are hydraulic oils that are just for cylinder uh, type applications, and there are different uh, types of oils uh, hydraulic oils, but these are tractor hydraulic fluid, THF. Okay, let's get to the results here. So I've got the sheet. I'll put it up on the screen, broken down into a couple categories. The top uh, section here is wear metals. These are virgin samples. So these should pretty much be zero across the board, and that's pretty much what they are. Uh, contaminants uh, seem to be low to zero. Of course, you know, maybe I bottles were dirty. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe some of these are added to the hydraulic fluids intentionally. Uh, so sodium, for example, I did find that that can be an additive in some engine oils. So maybe it's an additive, an intentional additive in hydraulic fluids. Uh, speaking of additives, then moving on to the additive package, you can see the side-by-sides. I'm not going to read them all off to you. Uh, there's some boron variation as far as low numbers on Kubota and Traveler. Uh, calcium seems to be about the same. It's a little low on Kubota and Traveler. Uh, then I'll skip magnesium. They're uh, about the same. Again, a little low on Kubota and Traveler. Phosphorus and zinc, though, are much lower on Kubota than they are on the other brands. So I'm not sure why that is. I'd love to know in the comments uh, or hear opinions in the comments if you have any information about why that may be. I was expecting the additives to be higher in Kubota, but that's what it is. Uh, so moving down, I've got my redneck cold pour uh, results there that you saw earlier in the video. And then it switches back to the Blackstone results for viscosity uh, flash point. Uh, water and insolubles are, are zero, of course, they're virgin samples. Uh, and then the TAN, the total acid number, that was the adder that I had to um, pay for on the test results. So you can see the Kubota sample starts out a lot lower than the other three,
but according to the analyst, and I'll switch over here, all four fluids are good fluids and should work fine. So there are, there are the results I've got. Uh, you can study this sheet. I'll uh, paste a larger version of it toward the end of this video that's maybe a little easier to see. I'd love to see comments uh, from you on your experience with any of these fluids or any other tractor hydraulic fluids uh, that you may have successfully or unsuccessfully used in your tractor. So what's the next step here? Well, I paid for the TAN number, uh, so I am going to change my hydraulic fluid here in a couple of days or weeks. I'm going to get to it. Uh, so I'm going to send that sample off and see if in the time I've used it, which is pretty low hours, and um, it's going to end up being like 15, 16 months or so, um, if my total acid number went up over that time, and if so, by how much from the baseline of 3.7. Uh, so that's the next step for me, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you would like to get a virgin sample, and I, only virgin sample right now, if you want to get your virgin sample tested for the fluid that you prefer, uh, refer back to earlier in the video uh, for how to do that. And the only other thing I'm going to say about these numbers is that these were single samples. Keep that in mind. I've done enough baseline testing in, in other another uh, field of uh, in the past to know that you don't just test one container of oil or one widget and say, hey, here's your specs, right? You do averages. You do, you know, many samples and come up with, uh, you know, to come up with your results. So take these with a grain of salt to an extent because it's only one sample. And that's it. So that's the next step in the tractor hydraulic fluid uh, debate that continues to rage online and probably will forever, no matter what we show here. Uh, check out my other video on a comparison, specs comparison of several hydraulic fluids uh, if you're interested in that. And then in a future video, I hope to get some samples from other, uh, from you, from viewers, and I get those uh, results put into a video and I'll do a side by side of every sample I have. If you have any comments on these oils or on your experiences, please post them below. Please like the video if you did like this content. And uh, I tell you, I mean, this has been a major undertaking, major cost for my small channel. Uh, but I, I've enjoyed it, and I hope you've gotten some benefit out of it. So until next time when we test some more oils and maybe some used Fermatran, appreciate everyone watching. Take care.